Hi there and welcome to the stereoscopic sessions on svoke.net. Today I want to talk about the camera setup and therefore I will show you the advantages and disadvantages of parallel and toad in setups. After that I will tell you how to calculate near and far plane the easy way. And I also want to talk about a method that is far more advanced and even I don't fully understand it right now. Alright then, let's get started. So this is a parallel camera setup and this is toad in. A fine thing about parallel setups is that you can define the convergence in post. For that, you just move your left and right eye horizontally together or more apart. With this method, you are defining where the zero plane will be. Another advantage of a parallel setup is that the audience can look everywhere in the picture and have a good stereo impression. That's a bit different in a toad in setup. The only disadvantage is the cropping you have to do for every shot. But this gives you also the freedom of choosing the convergence in post. On a toad in setup, the convergence has to be decided on set, so you can't adjust the convergence in post. Without modifications in post, you also have a convergence point only in the center, because your cameras are twisted toward this point. It's like squinting all the time and your audience will only have a good stereo impression when looking to that specific point. This is also because the images aren't matching exactly. You've got keystoning and depth plane curvature. Let me show you what this is. If you are looking on a checkerboard and use a parallel setup, you'll get this. All fields are lined up nicely and your brain can match left and right view easily. But when you are looking through a toad in setup, you'll get this. When you overlay your two camera views, they will match up in the center. But the closer you get to the edge of the screen, the more distortion you will have. This is called keystoning and gives you a depth plane curvature. Because there's a height offset that gets larger to the edge of the screen. So to fix this, you will have to distort this in post until you are getting your images lined up like above. Alright, so it seems Toad In has a lot of disadvantages. So in computer graphics, parallel setups are most commonly used. But in live action movies, you may have to use a parallel setup because the cameras are so big that you can't get them close enough together, especially when you want to film something that's really small. But more about live action in session number 4. Because we are in 3D, I want to show you how an off-axis setup works. On a normal parallel setup, we can only use this area right here and have to crop everything else. This also means we have to render out a wider image to get our final resolution, therefore adjust the field of view and so on. But in 3D, we can just do an image shift or film offset to line up the image planes exactly. In 3ds Max, you will have to use a skew modifier for that. You should watch the tutorials by Louis Marcoux if you want to know how to do this. So what we are doing mechanically is that we are twisting the chip inside the camera depending on how far our target is away, while the cameras themselves are staying parallel. This would be impossible with current live action cameras, but it saves us a lot of work in 3D. Now let me show you how to calculate near and far plane the easy way. First off you will have a target which locates where your zero plane will be. Now measure the distance between your target and your cameras. Take one half of that and draw a line. This is where your near plane will be. Now take this distance and add it behind your target. This is where your far plane will be. So you've got all three planes, near, zero and far plane. This defines your stereo space. And because objects are getting bigger when they are closer to the camera, this results into a cone. So everything that is kept in the orange space will have good stereo. In my stereo rig, I haven't used one half of the distance for the near plane, but one third. This is because things that are going out of the screen are less comfortable than keeping things behind the screen. I also want to keep away from eye poking. The closer you get to the near plane, the likelier it is to produce discomfortable stereo. But the audience has also the strongest response to out of screen effects. So you really should include some out of screen effects into your movie. Now, the distance between the two cameras also stands in relation to your target distance. A rule of thumb is to divide the distance by 30, because this gives the most realistic depth impression. But you can also divide by 60 when you are using long lenses or your stereo effect is too strong. In live action film, you should use 65 to 70 mm, because this is the average distance human eyes have. Other distances are growing or shrinking objects. So in live action film, the eye distance is somewhat the scale. In 3D it's relative and depends on how big you build your scene. So let's get to the advanced depth base calculation. This depth calculation doesn't depend on target distance or viewer distance, 
but on your image width. So you divide your image width by 30 and get the maximum deviation in pixels. Now you can decide how much depth you want to use and which elements should get the most depth. Only depending on this you will calculate your near and far plane. This is very interesting with multi-camera rigs when you can have a rig for the foreground and one for the background. In our example you can give the foreground 24 pixels and your background only 10 pixels. This is also great to handle over shoulder shots and long lenses. Well, this is all I can tell you. My friend David Shelton has already included this technique in his advanced version of the 3 hippie stereo rig, but he hasn't published it yet. Alright, now I'd like to give thanks to the people who shared their knowledge with me. First off, Louis Marcoux for always sharing his formula and you really should check out his tutorials. And of course to David Shelton who always shows me his latest improvements and results in stereo. I'm also looking forward to his graduation film and his diploma thesis. Now I want to thank you for watching and listening. For more information, visit my website where you can find more tutorials about stereo and also get a free rig for Cinema 4D. And if you're in need of a free rig for 3 years max, you should visit the website of David Shelton. Alright, so long. I wish you good luck for a good stereo.